Okay guys, welcome to my first technique video. I call this a technique video because what I will go what I'll be doing is just showing you how to perform some things on ACR. I do this on my normal gameplay, so you may have seen this on other videos, but uh, you didn't really know how to perform them, so I'll be showing you how to do them. Okay, so first up, we have what I call fast smoking. Fast smoking no, is nothing but a set of things that you can do to increase the speed at which you throw the, the smoke bomb. Well, not, a speed, not the speed of the smoke itself, I just mean the time it takes you to aim the smoke bomb. So, for example, I know that this guy is my target in this case. It, it actually is very easy because there are no lookalikes. But the thing is that most of the time when you're pursuing uh, your target or either your pursuer is after you, you can identify them and you know who they are. So you may want to throw the smoke at them so you can kill them, stun them, depending on who we are talking about. And if you simply hold the smoke bomb ability button like this, then the aim for the smoke bomb is going to start anywhere in front of you, like in any random location. It's usually it's just like directly where you're facing. Like if I'm facing that way, it's going to do that. If I flip the camera, it's going to do that. So it's going to turn around, you know. So depending on the camera angle, that's where the smoke is going to be aimed. And we really don't want that. What we want is to, to know where the aim of the smoke is going to begin so that we can aim faster and perhaps anticipate our, our targets so that we can land the smoke where they are going to be, not where they are. And for example, if I lock on my target, this is, and this is perhaps the, the first key thing about uh, fast smoking, if I lock on my target, and then hold the ability button for the smoke bomb then the aim will always begin at their feet as you can see and this can be quite useful because if you know where the aim of the smoke will begin then you can anticipate easier where you have to move the stick so, so that the smoke lands where they are going to be not where they are in this case my target is not walking he's just standing so if I aim the smoke at him then uh, I am sure that I can release the button and it is going to land with where he is. But for most targets, especially players, they are usually not standing unless they are perhaps landing. But most of the time they are walking or who knows, running. So what you want to do is to anticipate them and land the smoke where they are going to be walking by the time the smoke lands there. For example, let's take uh, an NPC who is walking. I'm going to take for example this girl in this group so basically if I hold the smoke button I know that the smoke is going to begin aiming at her feet so if I want to anticipate her then I gotta you know push this, the stick slightly in the direction that I think that she's going to be for example in this case I think they're going to keep walking forward as the group is headed that way so I'm going to do something like this Okay, so as you can see this can be very useful at times because you know there may be people running a lot and you're just like tired of being after them, you just wanna uh, get it over as fast as possible and when that happens the smoke may be your weapon of choice so you don't waste too much time on someone who's running. And among other things, because for example, uh, for your pursuers, uh, then if you don't aim the smoke really quick, they may see you, that you are aiming the smoke at them and they may run to try to dodge it. If you think that's going to be the case, then uh, you should like predict a bit where they are going to move and aim it uh, in the direction that you think that they will go. You, you get better with practice, at first you may find it a bit hard to, to aim the smoke really hard but the thing is that with time you get better and better and you get faster so your anticipation also gets better and you miss less you will miss sometimes but you know it's worth uh, a try to see if you can land the smoke on that so 
there's one last thing that I should tell you about fast smoking, and it's that when you lock in your target like this, then you should try uh, to be facing the target when when you begin aiming the smoke bomb. In this case, I do not mean that the camera angle is facing them like that. I mean that your character, your persona, in this case, my persona is the trickster. Your persona should be facing the target like this. It doesn't matter if my camera angle is looking in another direction. The thing is that if your character is not facing uh, the target or the, 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 the persona who you have locked onto, then it's going to do a small animation where it's turning around and this animation kind of takes some time so if you release the, the smoke bottom too quick sometimes it may, it may not come out because of the animation uh, like it was still in progress so you should always try to be facing your target so you can avoid the, the turning animation it's not that long but it takes some valuable time and also if the player is really skilled they might see you and like uh, I don't know, wall, wall jump or something like try to dodge you by doing something like like uh, like this you know like jumping into another wall or climbing that kind of thing so the thing is that you should always be facing your target uh, when you're about to smoke them and that should help you a lot because you're going to aim faster Okay, so that's it for fast smoking. Let's get on with uh, the second technique, which is not that great of a technique, but there's simply some people who do not know this. And it's that with mute, uh, there is uh, some stuff that you can do, like there's a way that you can identify your target or your pursuers thanks to mute, because uh, mute reveals Templars who are affected. So the way it reveals which Templars are affected is that there's like a green flash over the body of the NPC who is affected, well, not NPC because if it was an NPC it's not gonna show anything. But if you got a target or a pursuer close to you and you activate mute, then there's going to be like a green flash over their body and you can see it and that way you can know that either they are your target or they are a pursuer. So if by any chance you don't know who your target is in this in this case I clearly know this is my target but the point is like if I didn't know if for example there was a chance that my target was disguised or well we have two of them here ah too bad he's going to leave so uh, when the mute act goes on then take a quick look a very close look at the body of, of my target and you can see that there's like a green flash over it, and that shows me that he's my target so let's go on one two three okay so I don't know if you saw it I surely hope you did but the thing is that that green flash you just saw it didn't come up in the body of the courtesan it only came up in the body of the gladiator so when you see this flash I call it the mute flash when you see the flash in the body of, of, the, of the target or the or perhaps some other persona that's close to you then you know that he was affected so either that is your target or that's one of your pursuers um, by the way there's uh, I don't know if this happened in Brotherhood, but uh, the thing is that Mute doesn't affect any other Templars that are close. Like it only affects your pursuer, your pursuers, and your target. If like by any chance there is any other Templar who's close by, then they will not be affected by by Mute, and it will not show the Mute flash either. So it's a very reliable way and a very discreet way to identify your target. Also, most of the time, uh, they don't even know where, where the mute came from, so it's gonna be hard for them, like, if you're blended in a crowd uh, or close to them or something, and you uh, throw mute, they're not going to know who you are, 
which is very different from charge because like if you throw charge and and for it for any reason you miss then ev everyone is going to know who you are like if your pursuers are close they're going to kill you and that kind of thing whereas with mute since it's so discreet like unless you do something very obvious like running or that kind of stuff then no one's going to know who you are they, they just know that their, their abilities were disabled but they will not know who you are so that's about it uh, it's not a big lesson perhaps you already knew this because the game actually tells you this uh, but yeah there are a lot of people who did not do not know it or did not know it until now so I'm just gonna show it again in case you missed it last time here you go three two one was very clear right? so let's let's get on with our next technique okay so next technique is actually <laughs> a fairly easy one perhaps the easiest one I'm just you know gonna put it here because it actually fits here but the thing is that uh, some people do not know that you can actually long jump <laughs> are you serious like well if you don't know it's probably because you haven't played the single player uh, of the game but the thing is that when you reach a corner help, help helper such as this then you can press the circle button right before you well it, it doesn't have a strict time just you just have to press it before you reach the corner helper it, and, it, and it's, it's going to do a long jump like this okay so it's pretty simple For, uh, as I said it's probably the simple and the shortest explanation that I'm going to give, to give. just uh, when you're about to reach a corner helper you press the circle button uh, you know it's not useful at all times but it is useful sometimes because for example if someone was following me and they were on that roof and I was running uh, for example if I was here and I was running from them and I was reaching this corner then instead of using the, the corner hopper in the normal way like this that will get me killed because the guy will probably be running over on top of me and reach this place pretty very early and before I, I turn the corner and then when I was here he will kill me so you, you just you know you gotta think like when it's gonna be useful or not because it, it is not always useful to do a long jump uh, likewise it is not always useful to, to turn the corner so you know you just uh, keep that in mind and use it as you see fit so there's another thing that uh, a lot of people have asked me about and it's like I have told them that I know that mute's range is for example I think it's 6 meters I don't remember right now since I will we'll check it uh, right away in the menu but the thing is that, like for example I told them that mute distance is something around uh, this distance or perhaps more perhaps like this yeah like that that is the, the exact mute range uh, so the thing is that there are a lot of people asking me like how do you know that that is 6 meters or how do you measure how far is an ability going to get and uh, you could do it like you know with practice like you come up here into the training ground and try over and over and you may get it right but the thing is that there is an easier way to actually do this and it's by going into the single player of the game so I'll just show you how okay so here we are in the single player of the game uh, what I'm going to tell you you probably know it but you just didn't know that it was the same distances for both the multiplayer and the the single player of the game but the thing is that as you can see um, my primary memory is uh, a persona so the distance that shows in the right uh, the lower corner of my screen then that's the distance that it's from from me to where I'm headed in this case is that particular persona over there 
So in case uh, in case that uh, your primary memory is not a persona right now, uh, depending on where you are in the game, it might be a building or something. But if at least you can find uh, somewhere where there is a persona that begins a memory. In this case, I'll, I know that my primary memory is a persona. You can uh, set a custom marker on them. You know, the custom marker is like if you press X on the map, uh, on the persona or memory that uh, you want to measure the distance, then you select them and that way you, you are sure that the distance that is showing on the lower right corner of the screen uh, on the left of, of the map, then that's the distance towards uh, the selected memory. So for example, if I wanted to verify the range of the uh, mute ability, I know that the normal range is 6 meters, so I just come really close to the guy, like right now I know that I'm at 0 meters from him, and I start walking away until I get 6. So for example, this is the range of mute, and that way you can know like exactly how far is it going to get. And Either way, I, I do not recommend using mute at full range because it's going to take you some time to get to where the, the affected tempo is. So the effect might wear off unless you run, but it's really uh, it's preferable that you walk. So normally I use the, the mute like at four meters, like I did at this distance. Like I'm walking towards my, my pursuer or target and when I'm at 4 meters distance then I activate mute and I start either pressing the, the square, well, I, I'm a PS2 a player so I press either the square or, or the circle button and that either gets me the stun or, or the kill. So that's, you know, that's just one way that you can measure the distances of abilities. Uh, it's very useful for measuring firecrackers and other abilities that you're not like quite sure how far do they get. For smoke and other abilities is easier because you can actually see the the effect. You can see the smoke, but for example, for firecrackers you cannot see anything at all. You just see the crowd uh, scared and that kind of stuff, but that doesn't really tell you how far did the the firecrackers get. But if you do something like what I just told you, then you can do realize easier how far do they get. And that's basically it for now. Uh, perhaps I'll be making some more uh, technique tutorials in the future. If you liked it, then comment on it. And I'll see you around, guys. See you.